One of the keys to understanding Kotlin is understanding the type hierarchy system. So this is a great diagram, which is actually used over here from this gentleman who created it, which is Marcos Sandoval. So thank you, Marcos. This is a great diagram that illustrates the Kotlin type hierarchy system, which basically states that any non-nullable type is always going to extend the any type, and any nullable type will extend the nullable any type, which we can see here. And then we have also nothing in there, et cetera. We'll get into that later. So Boolean, string, a class you create, unit, number, everything extends any. So you can use any or the nullable any type inside of your functions as a parameter type. So this is very similar to in the Java world of using object. Now you can actually test this by writing a simple little program and we'll say val age equals 32 and we could say something like this. If age is any, then we can actually say print is any. And that would tell us if this is any. Now this is how we can check for types inside of Kotlin. You know, this is type checking. We're checking to see if age is of this particular type. Now I could change this to say, hey, is if age is a string, and we're gonna see here the incompatible types type string and int. Well, it already knows, the compiler knows at this point in time that this is not going to work. So what we could say is, I could change this to the type any. I could say if age is a string, then it would print that off. And if we run this, we'll see we get nothing back. So let's go ahead and add an else statement here. Print ln, not any. Now if we say not any, well this is a string, so we're just gonna change this to it is. It is not. And so is age, which is any, does it equal a string? No, it's not. Okay, well, is it a int? Let's run that, see, is it an int? We see it is. We can change these to different, different values. So we say, is it a double? And we can run it, is it a double? It is not. So this allows us to start doing various different types of things. And we could change this to, because again, string, I'll just use Dawn actually, is a string. And we're gonna see that it's not a double. But again, it still compiles. Is it a int? No, it's not because it's an int. But if we were to change this to string, then we would see that we can actually easily type check it. Now this also works for other, you know, your own custom classes too. So we could say a data class, uh, say create an order, and maybe it has an amount, which is an int. And then maybe we have just a regular class that is a person and this person has a, a name, which is a string. So we could create a, an object here, say val uh, obj, and we would call this, we, again, we're gonna say, hey, this is any, so we're kind of just, we're using the root object here, uh, and we're saying, hey, this is any, and we're gonna create this person, and his name's gonna be, uh, let's, let's call it uh, Bob. Bob, and then what we can say, let me get rid of this age thing, we'll say this object string, no, it's not. So it's not a string. And we see that it is not. However, it would be nice to see what kind of object it is. And we can do that pretty easily. We can say print line. And we can just inspect the object, object.javaclass.name. And this will give us the name of the Java class that it is. So is this person uh, a string? Uh, no, it's not. It's a person class. So let's change this back to a, uh, let's go to uh, 16.0. Let's see what that is. So is it a string? It's not. And we'll see it looks like it is a double. Uh, and then we can also print a, you know, we could change this to, we could change this back to Bob. And of course this is gonna say it is, but let's go ahead and change this to int now. And if we run this, what we're gonna see now is it gonna say it is not, and the type is java.lang.string. Now we can change this around too. We could say, is this any? Now this is just gonna execute for everything. It's just gonna say it is. So it is, we could say, 12, we're just gonna say that it is. And we could say for a, you know, the data class order, which is gonna have a, an amount of, you know, 120, is object any, it is. So any is the root object of anything. So this allows you to do some cool type checking inside of your, this, you know, inside of your application because you may have an application that returns, you're working with some different types and for whatever reason, it returns back in any, which can happen for some various reasons. And so if, for example, let's go ahead and pass in a string. So val value, and that's gonna be a string. And we'll use a when expression. 
one value. And when we say the value is uh, one, then we want it to return, say return here. Return. Two, and if we return two, we're gonna return a hello. If we're gonna return a, if we say three, then we're gonna return something else such as a true, a Boolean value. If we ask for four, then we're gonna return a double. And so we'll say 16.0 or one. And then of course we have to provide an exhaustive else because this could uh, end up being a certain value. So we can get rid of that. There we go. And now at this point, what we can do up here is we can just say, what we can do is if we were to say get stuff and I were to pass in the number one there, what that's gonna do is is any is gonna return to it is. So, but let's go ahead and change this to string. So if my method, maybe a library I'm working with returns an object or any or something like that, I can do the type checking with the is keyword. And so it's not, so that's an integer. What about number two? So whatever this method returns is an any, it is. So now I can actually do this and do different type checking and perform various different operations based upon the type checking if I'm working with any type.